Welcome everyone. I'm Carlos Carbonell, illustrator and digital artist. In this tutorial I will show you how to paint a landscape using brushes and techniques that are similar to traditional media. Usually, I make this kind of paintings on another software, more focused to imitate tradition media. You can watch videos on my channel about the paintings I created. But, this time, I wanted to make something different. I will use Clip Studio Paint, version 2. Clip Studio is a very good software, surely the best for clean line art, doing flats and masks, and painting digitally. But it isn't used so much to replicate the look and feel of traditional media. I tested if it's possible. Bottom line is yes. It's possible. But with some considerations, on final chapter 1 we'll explain them in more detail. I created few new brushes, based on default Clip Studio brushes and assets. I will put a download link in the video description. Then I will show you how to prepare your canvas and start painting. The final painting took me around 75 minutes to complete. I will accelerate the video when I'm painting, to not make it so long. Don't worry, all process will be explained. This video is divided by chapters. I will put timestamps, use them if you wish to jump to any chapter. If I see there's enough interest, I will consider creating more content like this in the future. First step is the installation of the brushes. Please, refer to manual on how to do that. I recommend you install all brushes on a new tool. These brushes are based on the default brushes. If you wish, you can use default brushes instead of my own. In this case, I recommend you use the following brushes. The watercolor wash is good for big areas. The watercolor splash is good as it is. The thick oil paint is also good, but you will need to change the brush tip in order to replicate bristle brushes. First, we create a new canvas. I use the 4000 per 3000 pixel size. Use any size you wish, but I don't recommend going higher than that, because these kind of brushes struggle a lot with high sizes. We go to Materials and choose the pattern Japanese Paper 2. This pattern is to add more texture to our canvas, but not so much. So, we reduce the layer opacity. On a new layer we will put another pattern. Search for the Canvas 2 texture. Apply that texture to the layer. Reduce the size. Reduce the opacity. And finally, select the layer Blending Mode Multiply. These two layers will remain like that until the end. So, we create a new layer. I try the brushes, to see if their texture matches the canvas. I was lucky. But this isn't your case, resize the layer with the Canvas 2 texture. This is only to get more traditional feedback. If you wish, you can use the Canvas and Brush textures at different sizes. We import our reference, by loading it in the sub-view panel. The reference I used is a composition of some different images. Use any image you wish. Just make sure there's an interesting contrast between the foreground and the background. Now we have everything ready to start painting. A nice canvas with matching brushes, and our beautiful reference. I will paint the background first. Here the only purpose is to define areas, depth, and right values. I use the watercolor soft brush to cover everything. During this process I will not put any detail or try to be precise. I start with the sky. Notice I'm using the perceptual color mixing. If you use default brushes, you may need to activate it in brush settings. I paint roughly, I'm not trying to create a nice and smooth gradient.
For the foreground zone, I paint with dark and unsaturated green. When I start painting the middle distance area, I make the color even less saturated. For the mountains, I start using oil brushes. Remember that I'm only defining the areas, I'm not trying to be precise. As further as the distance of the elements, I keep desaturating the color and lowering the value. I add some definition to the middle distance, just to see if everything is going well. I start painting the clouds. For this purpose, the watercolor splash brush is very good. I start painting with white, painting clouds here and there. I don't paint the clouds from the reference. I just paint whatever it looks good to me. I blend a little the bottom area of the clouds to make them look not so sharp. You can use any blender here. Just try to not use the default soft blender brush, because it looks so digital. I use the same painting brushes, but in blender mode. They provide more natural feel, but they are also very laggy. I add some shadow areas to the clouds, still using the same watercolor splash brush. I blend all the clouds to make the brush strokes less visible. Ideally, I must blend all cloud edges a little bit. But I liked how it looks. So I left them as they are. I start the main painting process. Now it's time to start adding features and using more accurate colors. Here I start being more precise with the shapes, starting from far to near. For the mountains, I prefer brushes with flat shape. I'm using tilt rotation. If you stylus don't have that feature, you will need to change the angle setting. In landscape painting, the colors must be less saturated as far as the distance. Also, they must shift to blue. This is due to the reflection of the sky, more strong when the objects are far from you. As we paint near objects, we must add more saturation. It's also a good idea to use lower color value. This means using less black value, especially in the shadows. As the objects are near to us, we use higher values, and the shadows are stronger. The foreground must be the most saturated zone and have the darkest shadows on the entire painting. The last thing that must change from far to near is the details. The more near, the more details we must paint. As I'm approaching in the distance, I start adding more features. I don't add details, just the features. Surely it will remain like that until the end. My main focus will be the foreground. I add some fields to the middle distance. I don't try to make the exact shapes of the fields. Few brush strokes here and there are enough. For painting the far trees, I just paint with random brush strokes. To make the feel of trees, I use different height for each one. On the mountains, I use the knives I created. You can use any flat brush with some texture into it. This kind of brushes creates the feel of rocks. I don't paint the same as the reference. In fact, despite having the reference window open, there's so much time I don't watch it. 
In the mountains I try to add dimensionality by using lighter and darker tones. I don't add details. Remember, the more far is the object, less details must have. When you add dimension, lighting and shadowed zones, you must take into account the source of the light. In this case the sun is on the left. So, the shadows must go on the right. I keep painting the mountains. You may notice that, with few brush strokes, we already have good looking mountains. I add some trees in the middle distance. For that purpose, I use the watercolor splash brush. I don't paint trees everywhere. I try to make straight lines, so it looks like a tree range. This, combined with the strokes I did for the fields, adds the feel of more details than I really did. When I start painting the foreground, I decided to add more strong and saturated colors. I paint from dark to light, leaving some zones with the darkest value. I make this because the grass, especially in the nature, don't grow evenly and there's always zones with less grass. It's time to start painting the foreground. First, I create a new layer in overlay blending mode. This mode adds contrast to the lower areas. It also adds some saturation, depending which color we are using. So, we must proceed with caution when using this mode. I use different colors to add more color variety. The overlay mode, if you use darker color, also adds shadows. Still in overlay mode, I also add some shadows and light in the far areas. In this case, I use an almost gray color. I make this because the distant areas need more contrast, not to apply direct brush strokes with any color. I also add more definition to the middle distance trees, by adding some light. Ideally, you must use the same brush you used to paint. So, for the trees, I use the watercolor splash brush. On the mountains, I use the knives or any flat brush. It looks good, but I will add more contrast. I merge the layers. I duplicate the layer and change the blending mode to multiply. Then, with the soft eraser, I delete the areas I don't want to have contrast. This is an easy and fast way to add contrast locally, instead of using filters and masks. I start painting the trunk on a new layer. Despite being a near object, I don't paint it accurately. I just make rough brush strokes. When you paint landscapes or nature features, the more loose and rough you paint, the better. Don't try to be precise. I block the transparency of the layer. This way I will not paint outside the trunk. 
I add volume to the trunk. I use the knives. Any texture brush will serve, but make sure the texture is too small. Try to use any brush with big texture. With the hue saturation tonal correction, you can tweak the colors easily. The tone curve is also a nice tool. I used it to add more contrast to the trunk. I start painting the tree on the right. I create a new layer between the foreground and the trunk. As before, I make loose strokes. For the branches, I lower the size of the brush. For painting trees, when you paint from the bottom to the top, you must keep lowering the brush size. Here I watch the reference, because I like the distribution of the branches, but I try to paint as loose as possible. When you do this, Try to not think about the exact position of the branches, just paint them. For the leaves, I use, again, the watercolor splash brush. This brush is wonderful. I did two more variants of it, but the default brush will serve for everything. This tree don't have so many leaves. But, when you paint more populated trees, always leave some areas unpainted. This helps to make look the trees more natural. I add some highlights, but not so much. The trunk has more importance, so most details and contrast must go here. I add two more details on a new layer. As I did before, I alpha lock the layer and paint the shadow. I don't add so much detail here. Now it's time to add the shadows in the foreground area. I create a new layer with multiply blend mode. For painting shadows in multiply mode, I usually pick the color from the same area. I paint the shadows in the same direction as the reference, but not in the same position. I just paint the shadows that seem good to me. As I'm painting on a new layer, I don't care if I paint over an area that don't must have any shadow. I will erase these areas when I finish painting the layer. When I'm in multiply layer, I also use it to paint some shadows in the background only if I consider it necessary. I create a new layer. This time I use the overlay mode, again. I use it to add some highlights here and there. Sometimes the overlay or multiply blending modes are too strong. In this case, I create a new layer, but in normal blending mode. This way I can paint with the exact color I wish. This is my usual painting process. First I paint everything roughly, just to add the right values, and place the first features. Then I add more definition and dimension. Thereafter I start painting on new layers. I switch between multiply, overlay and normal modes. Usually I merge the layers I create, as often as possible. Otherwise I will end with lots of layers containing small details. I add some grass. For that purpose, I use the rake brush I created, but any brush that creates parallel lines may serve. The foreground area already look like a grass field. So I don't paint so many gras, just a tiny bit here and there. 
This will make the grass more realistic and appealing. When you paint grass, don't paint it evenly. Try to paint it in different areas, height sizes, and directions. Also, don't focus only in one area. I paint a little of orange and brown in the bottom area. Not only because the reference looks like that. It's a good idea to add dirt tones in green areas. It adds more interest. To do that, you can use any brush you consider necessary. If you use textured brushes, try to use different textures, not always the same. I add some details in the ground to simulate nature elements, like fallen leaves, pebbles or anything else. For that purpose, I use the useful watercolor splash brush. Use different colors to add more variety. I tweak the multiply layer with the shadows a little bit to make the shadows look stronger. I created the final chapter here. Not for any artistic reason. It's because I will use it to explain my conclusions. About the artwork, I start creating the branches on the top left. I use the same technique as I did on the right tree. Just there's some more leaves. On the rest of the artwork, I really didn't make anything new that needs more explanations. Maybe the biggest thing I did is to use the warp distortion to tweak one of the middle distance cliffs. I just keep tweaking things, here and there. I add some more shadows, some highlights and some details, using the layer blending modes. Remember, overlay, multiplay in normal modes. Now I want to speak about my experience with Clip Studio Paint to create this kind for paintings. My overall impression is that is good enough. Isn't the same as other software that have real impasto or watercolor simulations. But the engine is able to do great things. The perceptual color mixing mode is very good. Not too strong, but still noticeable. I guess it's very adequate for landscape painting. The brush creation options are good. You can use textures on your brushes. And, if you do it correctly, you can make an entire tool having the same texture you put on your canvas. Now for the things that aren't so good in Clip Studio Paint for the traditional look and feel. The brush blending mode lags too much for this kind of brushes. It's good for small sizes, but it struggles a lot on high sizes. And not that much, only being 400 or 500 pixels wide, they become almost unusable. I will need further brush development to check if there's a workaround. Maybe I could find a compromise between performance and visual features. Don't seem so god for painting on higher sizes than DIN A4. Not only because it struggles with high brush sizes. It may be a big problem for textures and brushes. I recommend stay on DIN A4 size or equivalent. Around a maximum of 3500 pixels wide size. Then, if you need higher sizes, resize your final artwork with any AI resizing tool. There's some things I could do better. Instead of using the same painting brushes for blending, it would be a better idea if I used an blending tool instead. Not the soft brush, but maybe a grainy one. I guess there's too much canvas grain in my artwork. This is okay if you like that. But it could be better if I used blend tools more often to get rid of some grain. And this is it. To be honest, I didn't expect it to have a so good experience.
maybe this is because there's not so many traditional paintings done in Clip Studio Paint. Other famous software had more traditional-looking artworks everywhere. Or maybe because I had prejudices, thinking that Clip Studio is almost used only for comics and digital-looking art. Anyway, I'm happy with the artwork. Surely I will make more attempts like that. But I don't know if I will do full tutorials like this one. It depends on the success of this video. I hope you like it. If this is the case, please subscribe to my channel. And let me know in the comments your opinion about that tutorial. Be happy and see you in the next video.